Hello and welcome to this new exciting materials video. Whether you're learning materials for 3D or VFX, it doesn't matter, you've come to the right place. In this slow-paced step-by-step tutorial, we will start from scratch and learn the basic nodes, blend modes, and about distortion, world position, disintegration, and many other cool effects. Of course, they're gonna be over-explained and done in a really simple way for you to grasp the basics of how to create materials. So come and join me and let's have fun with it. Learn to create an action game in Unreal Engine 5. Start the first lesson for free in unfgames.com. Hello and welcome to this new tutorial. So I'm assuming that you're a complete beginner materials and I'm going to be explaining everything. Well, not everything, but the most vital. And uh, in a way that makes you feel comfortable for when you want to do materials alone, right? And even if you're not a complete beginner, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be helpful for you. Um, maybe you learned a few tricks and things like that. So make sure that you stick around. I'm just going to hold Ctrl and Spacebar to open the content drawer. And I already made a material folder with Ctrl, Shift and N or right click and new folder. And I'm already providing you some textures for you to use. Nothing too crazy. So you want to right click and you want to go on material. We want to name this M underscore cross, let's say, I don't know. We double click to enter. And it can be a little bit overwhelming because there are so many options and there are so many ways to make a different material. We are definitely not going over everything because again, it's going to be overwhelming, but we're going to go over the most fundamental the most uh, useful things that you're going to be using constantly, right? So for now, I just want you to go to the content drawer, select the texture, and then back to the material and hold T and left click. This is going to bring a texture sample. You can also just go to the content browser or drawer and just drag it here and drop it. It's however you want, right? But I used um, T and left click. So we have here our texture. This texture sample allows us to introduce a texture to our material. We can just hook this RGB here in emissive color. And on the left side, we can see that it's being previewed. We can select different uh, previews. We will select the plane. With left click on the editor window, well, on the preview window, we can just spin around it. With right click, we can zoom. And if we hold the mouse wheel button, or well, the mouse wheel wheel, <laughs> um, or the mouse wheel, we can just uh, pan around it. All right. So this is how it looks. So whatever configuration that we make in our material, our multiplications, additions, whatever, uh, whatever we do, we need to hook it here on this attribute list, right? Well, here it says the result node of the material. Sure. Um, so before we go on more in depth with this, I want to explain a little bit these two things that are really important for our material. So first of all, material domain, we need to select what kind of domain will our material be focused on, right? Right now, we just want to focus on surface because surface, um, well, this surface specifically defines the material as something that is going to be used on surface, right? <laughs> like uh, metal, like skin, uh, I don't know, any kind of physical surface, right? Again, we're going to be using this most of the time. For example, decal, uh, decals are uh, materials that are projected onto meshes in your level. Um, it could even be static meshes or skeletal meshes, right? And so on, like functions and volumes and post-process, user interface, but we 99% of the time, well, not 99, that's a complete lie. We're going to be focusing on surface, right? For BFX, of course. Uh, again, you can use post process sometimes, but okay, never mind. We just focus on surface for now. Fine. Then the next one is the blend mode. And exactly what is blend mode? So this, this option means how the material is going to blend with the background, right? If we select opaque, well, opaque just draws on top of the background. It has no transparency. And, well, good thing uh, about this is that uh, it interacts with light, right? So 
This is cool. This is used a lot too. Uh, masked is it's like when you need to control the visibility on a scale to zero to one, right? Zero is invisible and one it shows, right? Like for example, you have uh, something like a chain fence, right? And that chain fence has holes. Those holes will be a zero and the visible parts will be one, right? For example, this texture here, you can obviously tell that, uh, okay, for example, this middle part is one, but as it goes fading out, it's not gonna be one, maybe 0.5, maybe point something else. And this black is a zero. So if we switch this material attribute, well, the blend mode to masked, oh, I mean to hook this on the, sorry, on the opacity mask. You can see how only what is true one is showing. Right? There is no in between. It is either zero or one. And again, this is just used to control the visibility to zero to one. Okay. That's enough explanation. We wanna unhook this and go back to emissive color. Alright. Uh so oh yeah, the next one. So translucent. This is this at uh, the translucent and the addit and the additive is what we're gonna be using mostly. Translucent is used for obviously objects that require translucency. And it allows us to have a, like a smooth opacity gradients by working with the opacity. You know, it's kind of like a mask, kind of in the sense that you, oh, well, I'm gonna show you. So I just put this on translucent and I wanna hook this on opacity. Nothing is gonna show, oh, sorry. Three, four, three. You don't need to do this, Just you just need to watch. And well, you can see that there are many uh, shades in this, right? It is not just the the bright center, right? Maybe if I hook this, this is better. Yeah, you can see it way better like this, right? So mostly you're gonna be using translucent uh, blend modes for your effects. I'm just gonna erase this. Remember, you just need to watch that. Don't worry. Uh, about the shortcuts or anything. Okay, and the last one that we're gonna be using mostly is just additive. And additive is the simplest of them all. Um, this just simply adds pixels on top of the background, right? So we just have this emissive color and we're just adding on top of our background. We don't need any any opacity node or anything. What is black is just gonna be shown as uh, as transparent, right? Whatever is black, transparent. Okay, so once again, we are mostly gonna be using additive or translucent. The other ones, not so much. Alpha, com alpha composite is also really interesting because it allows us to manually pick what parts are additive and what parts can be translucent. Right, and the most common usage is for effects that, uh, that effects that you want to make pop on bright or dark backgrounds, right? No matter which one is it. But for now, we don't want to touch this. We just want to focus again. And I hope I'm not boring you with that uh, additive or translucent. I'm going to be leaving it on additive for now. Then shading model, if you want it to interact with light or not, but these blend modes, additive and translucent, do not interact with light anyway. So we just want to put unlit here. And two sided is if you spin around this, you cannot see it on the other side. If you click it, you can see it on both. Okay, so maybe we can start building some, some material now. Oh, sorry. Okay. We're going to be leaving this on additive on unlit, and we do not care about two-sided for now. So we continue. This texture sample that we just brought, or well, that we brought a little bit before, it has plenty of channels, RGB. If we use this top one, it's using the combination of them all, which is the result, right, that you can see here. You can also choose to use, use the red one that has different information, green one, or whatever, you know. We just want to we just want RGB for now. If you open up the texture with double click here, you can also see the channels individually if you want, right? 
this is just a preview. It doesn't change anything, right? But just so you know. So one of the most important um, modules in this is uh, multiplication or adding to. Just hold M and left click, and it's going to bring uh, multiply. Or you can also right click and type multiply, but that's way longer. Maybe you don't want that. So what does multiply do? You just want to hook this here, and we want to hook it here. For example, we can use it to multiply two nodes, obviously, right? It just multiplies. Or maybe you just want to multiply this texture by a value, and that could increase its intensity, as you can see here. Uh, maybe break the texture like that. Yeah, that's that's awful. Or maybe just make it softer. Right? There are many uses for this, but it's one of the most basics. We should try and bring another texture sample to show some some stuff. So we want to go here, probably select this noise, hold T, bring it in, and let's multiply them both and see what happens. So one thing that I also want you to know is that if you click on this little arrow, you can see the preview of what is happening between these two textures. And also here on Live Update, you can select, well, just leave all of this checked if you want, right? Here you can see the preview of what's happening in all of the nodes as they get updated. This is going to help you if you have a, like a movement, right? Just, just leave them all on, although know that the more complex your material gets, the slower it's going to be to compile or to modify if you have every single node running at the same time, right? Maybe if it's way too complex, you just don't want real-time nodes anymore or you don't want to preview them anymore, right? And also make sure that in here, on these three stripes, you have real-time on so you can preview your text in real-time in here. Okay, so we continue. Sorry. So now these two textures are getting multiplicated, as you can see in here. The white parts of the texture, and, and, and also, well, everything that is not zero is getting multiplicated. That's why you can see that the, the multiplication of this place that is zero against this one, which is one or whatever it could be, it's nothing because, um, well, one. Uh, whether you multiply by zero, it's zero, right? I, I just had a, a brain lapse there. Okay. So what can we do to preview this a little bit better? What if we add some movement to our textures? We want to hold P and left click for banner. This one here can help us move our texture in any axis that we want. And we want to hook this on our UVs. Here. And we want to say that on Y, we want this speed. And you can already see it moving here. It's creating a pretty cool effect. This is not looking bad. And OK, so they are being multiplied and onto the emissive color. Right. So the next one, hold A and left click. And this brings an add node. We want to add them together. And I just want to plug them here. So what's the difference between these two? Well, I'm pretty sure that you can guess by now, right? This is just adding them on top of each other. It's not multiplying anything. It's not combining anything. Just adding them both, adding both functionalities. So why would you, for example, in, in this case that we're multiplying these two textures like this, why would you want to add them like this? Well, maybe you just want to add another effect on top of this one. Maybe you want to, for example, bring this here, bring another texture in here. You want to multiply them. This is just an example. You don't need, need to follow. You just need to understand it. We do it like this. Maybe we want to, I don't know, we want to uh, make it softer with a normal multiplication here. I'm just, I'm just using simple notes. I'm not trying to make any complex notes to modify them. So we want to make it softer. Maybe we want to change it color 
and then we want to add them together. You know, if this is softer, maybe this has a different effect. Maybe we change the speed. You, I think you can kind of get it now, right? I probably didn't need to make the this whole configuration. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what the add node does. Now, what if we want to add this some color? Okay, I want to erase add. I'm happy with my multiplication. So what if we hold M again? We hook it on B. And in here, we need to add a node that allows us to change color. Okay, you can hold three and left click again. This brings a vector three constant. So this is three directions. But if we plug it here, and in here we modify the color, we can, well, place a color on our texture. What about green? There's an issue here though, because this texture already has a color, but we're just gonna plug it. And as you can see, it has changed. Probably it doesn't work on every, on every color though. Let's see, yeah, it doesn't work on every color, obviously. So what can you do to make this texture go black and white? I mean, you can use one of the channels, right? Remember that they were black and white? Yeah, sure, you can use that, but you can see that at least in this uh, texture that has different channels, information is different. And you just want the whole effect, right? You don't want any of this. So you can desaturate it, right? And that is fairly easy. Just bring it here like this and type desaturation. And this is just gonna desaturate whatever you need. And there you go. It looks like this, but don't worry, it's just black and white. And there we go. Now we can just change to any color and it's gonna change too. And also while you're changing colors, if you go beyond three, it's gonna be a, a color that emits light, an emissive color. So you can just put a three here or you can just type three here, right? And then, okay, pick whatever. And now this effect is popping a little bit more. What about 20? And now it is way brighter and it's way prettier. All right, that looks nice. So what else can we learn about colors? I hope I'm not going too fast. I think this is fairly simple. If I'm going too fast, please let me know. And, uh, and we can see what we can do about that. So next that I want to show you is a LERP. You wanna hold L and left click, and this brings up a LERP. So in colors, what this is gonna help us is to blend them together. So you have a A and you have B and you have alpha. So imagine that, well, I'm, I'm gonna make this more graphic to be, to make it more easy to understand. I'm gonna control C and control B this, and I'm gonna change colors to red maybe. So I wanna put green here, I wanna put red here. And I wanna open up this. Oh. Okay, so maybe I don't want this to be so bright. Just something tame, please. Something like that. So now it's getting the combination of them both because the alpha is 0.5. If we keep modifying the alpha to, for example, zero, it's gonna take completely the A. If we put one, it takes completely B. So this can help us, uh, for example, mix colors, or if you get a little bit more creative, you can put a mask texture on the alpha. And since this is taking values from zero to one, one being the brightest, depending on the texture, what part is the brightest is gonna put this color on the brightest and this one on the softest. Does that make sense? We're gonna make it a, an example to, to show you better. So I wanna put this here, or well, actually, I probably wanna put the blue here. 
and now you can see, right? Oh, maybe I mix these two up, but I think that you can understand it. So according to our mask, B is being the brightest and A is being the darkest, right? And you can maybe ask, but why, how is this, how is this helping us? Because this, uh, this green is, you cannot see it anyway. Okay, so let's plug it and see what's going on. Okay, well, obviously you can tell that uh, our effect is ruined because we're just uh, projecting all of this. There is no opacity in here. There is nothing telling us what are the, the edges, let's say, of our texture. So what if we just put this desaturation here on the opacity? Because it has no combination of anything, or well, maybe this one, but not this one because this already has a color and I don't, I, I don't want more information. I just want to put this here on opacity. Okay, now we have opacity and now we have a, a limit on our material. And now you can see the faint green on the edges. And also obviously this, uh, how, how do you call this color? Is it a uh, cream? Okay, I'm just gonna call it cream. And, and this yellow uh, sandish color on the middle. So it does help us to give us a, a faint uh, gradient on whatever that we're using, right? Now we can clean this up a little bit more and make it uh, a little bit more interesting. And I think that I haven't explained what emissive and opacity, or well, what opacity does exactly. So I'm just gonna unhook this with Alt and left click, Alt and left click too. Okay, so this texture here, I'm just gonna copy it and I'm gonna erase it after. You don't need to do it, just watch it. So I plug this on opacity. Okay, and there is nothing showing because there is no color in our in our material. There's nothing on emissive. So nothing appears. We just have our opacity. If we press one and one brings a, a constant, just a, a normal value, I'm just gonna put one to it and I'm gonna hook it on the, on the emissive color. That just gives us white, right? You can see that our texture as opacity has just white on top of it, right? If we erase what we have on opacity, you just have a big square. And remember that this is just a preview because this is a rectangle. If you have a mesh, maybe you'll see your whole mesh white, right? So it's important what we put on opacity to give bounds to our material, but uh, if maybe you don't want uh, if maybe you don't want this crazy combination of colors or whatever, you can just hook this directly. And since you already have black here, you have your um, your material the same, right? Okay, so we're gonna be making a redo of this quickly to show you some other tricks, all right? So I'm just gonna erase it and make it all over again a little bit faster, all right? So I'm gonna bring the cross in, there we go. And we want to lerp it. I want it to have different colors on different areas of its, uh, well, of its, um, how do you call it, radius? Well, on its UV space. So for this, I wanna check the, the texture. What do we have? Okay, this is fine. I wanna use this too, I think. I don't want to use the whole, okay. So I want B to be my alpha, just as we did before. And I want two constants. So hold three and hold three. I wanna put the combination on A and the combination on B. This top one, I want it to be I can just modify it here. So maybe four, maybe 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.
it's a greenish, it's similar, right? Maybe a tree, point tree, point tree. Yeah, it, this is also somewhat similar. Okay, so what is the result of this? Okay, this looks all right. I want to hook this on my emissive. Okay, and I want to hold M for multiply. Get on the green and opacity. Okay, it's looking a little bit weird for now, but I think this is fine. And also on this multiply here, remember that you can just put three, you can increase intensity. Maybe it's not the greatest idea because as you can see, if we keep increasing it, at least for this case, we lose a lot of uh, value on the texture. See the red lines disappearing and it's just uh, incredibly bright white. We don't want that. But I'm just going to leave this here just in case. That's fine for now. All right. So now this texture has UV coordinates. And how to explain this? So um, we can just hold, uh, well, right click, type texture texture coordinate. And what this little node does, it express, uh, it, um, it outputs the UV texture coordinates in the form of a two channel vector value. And this allows us to, uh, well, have different UVs for our materials, or maybe to specify tiling. We want to try it now. So just hook it in. All right. And let's say you tile in maybe two. And you can already immediately see the difference, right? Maybe two again. Okay, nice. Obviously, we don't want to do this for, <laughs> for our texture. We want it to look good. So uh, we want to just place it here. And what I want to do is a common trick for VFX uh, materials, which is distortion. I want to distort this texture. All right. And I, I hope that's not a little bit too advanced for this. No, no, it, it, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. We, we're going to be learning simpler um, materials uh, after this one, and also a little bit more complex after that one. And I think it's OK. OK. So remember the panner node? I want to bring a panner node. And I also want to bring this noise again. So I want this noise to pan and I want it to pan maybe a one. So it goes up. That, that looks nice. And as I told you, I'm going to distort the UVs of this texture. So uh, again, exactly what that is. I want to put this texture as a noise to distort uh, the UV coordinates of this texture here. Okay. If we plug it directly, I don't think it's going to work like this. No, yeah. I'm going to plug a channel. You can, well, kind of see something, right? It it obviously is this texture uh, distorting this one, but uh, it's too extreme, way too extreme. And well, I just wanted you to, show, to, to see that. So I want to hold the multiply, hold M, left click. I want to put this channel on A because I, I, I just want one vector here. And I want to make this way softer. The distortion should not be that strong. So only 0.1. If you want to preview it, it's like this. It is, it is softer. It has uh, lower values than this one, which is fine. And I want to add the coordinates to this, right? So it knows where to be. And I want to put it on the UVs. And as you can see, it is already distorting. If we increase this value, it just goes crazy and and it's it, nothing appears. Point two, it's also too distortion. Well, too, too much distortion. So point one looks fine. The texture coordinate, we don't want to move it, but we want it to be inside this add to uh, so it knows where to be. So far, everything is cool. The texture is looking 
nice, although the colors are not looking that great. But for now, just for now, that is fine. So let's continue. Uh, now, besides these colors here, I also want to uh, add some more noise on top of this. I do not want to uh, to get in the way of the of the opacity. I just want to change some things on the emissive color. Remember that. Oh, I'm I'm gonna tell you that that after. Okay, so I want another texture. Actually, the same texture. This this noise here. And I want to pan it. So hold P. And we plug it in. And this probably just a minus 0.3. And the reason because of that, I want a different motion than the one that we previously put here. Okay, so I want to multiply this, like this, we hold three, by another color. I, I'm thinking maybe some light blue, so really strong on the Y, and even stronger on the blue. Oh, okay, awesome, light blue. Now, you remember add and multiply? I just want this to be on top of our of our material. I do not want to uh, to combine it because if I combine it, and by combine I mean I mean uh, multiply with this previous one. Let's see what happens. I mean, it doesn't look that bad, <laughs> but definitely this is not what we want. So we just want to add this. Add it on top of this one, right? And remember, this is a, well, this is a, a complete uh, texture, right? But since our opacity is just this star, we're just gonna be painting this star. So we added them together and we plug it on the emissive, and suddenly this is looking way better. No more weird middle star, right? And why that happened? Well, we just painted this really hard color on top, and we evened out the middle and made these edges way softer. There is way more harmony, there is way more, uh, if you can say, uh, color combination, right? I, I think this could be way, way slower, it's too crazy. Okay, so well, this is just one of the materials. We can go on and make uh, different tricks and, and, and different things. So what I want you to take with this one is that uh, this LERP is really useful, especially if you plug a really nice alpha. And, and later on, we're gonna be using different uh, um, options here, and you're gonna see some other cool stuff. But uh, I just love using LERP with alpha, it's really fun. And let's go to the next material then. And well, actually, let's place them here. So I wanna press here basic, no, 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 shapes, plane, bring it here. And I want to hold here, or well, just uh, yeah, yeah, press here. So we select it, and then we can just place it here. Another thing before we move to the next material, and also you can see that this is uh, okay, it should be this way. If you are editing your material, you're having fun, sure, but it is really annoying to just modify this color click on apply or click on save. I haven't saved, uh, I forgot, but um, it, it is a really slow process, but there is a way to, to improve it. So just here, for example, right click and press convert to parameter. Okay, this parameter is gonna be named inner color. Same for this one, right click, parameter. This is gonna be named outer color. And we have one more color here. This is gonna be named added color. Okay, 
You can also use that for textures. You can convert them to parameters too. But for now, we just want these three. We click on apply. We go to our content browser, right click on our material and press create material instance. Okay, and we can double click and enter. And in here, you already have all of these three options. And if you see that your material is not moving, it is not you. You need to click here, as I told you, and real time. That's way better. So now when you modify this, it takes no time to change. And that is way faster, way cooler, especially when your material starts getting heavier and heavier as you go. All right. And also, you want to place this here. OK, that's our first material. It wasn't hard. Uh, I hope that the distortion was clear enough. It's pretty simple, right? For our next material, we're going to be creating a really simple multiplication, but it has one thing that you may find a little bit complex. Hopefully not. But we're going to be learning about curves. And you may ask, well, why are we learning curves if this is a really uh, beginner-friendly material uh, video? And uh, well, they're really useful and uh, I love them and I'm sure that you're going to love them too. And <laughs> the earlier you know about them, the better. I'm going to make it really simple. It's going to be really fun. So what exactly is a curve? Well, a curve can be a vector, can be a float, can be uh, colors. Uh, it's like a track of interpolated points in a given range. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry. You don't need to listen to that exactly. I'm just telling you what it is. <laughs> but um, we are going to be using a curve for color. And I'm going to be explaining you with examples why we need it a little bit later on as we create the material. Just know that we are going to use them for color. And uh, it can be a vector, it can be a float. And it has points. <laughs> All right? <laughs> That's good enough. So we want to right click material m underscore, how do we call this? Uh, wave? And we enter. We want this to be additive, super simple, and unlit. We want to bring in our good old trustworthy noise, actually two of them. And we're going to be uh, adding them on top of each other. Oh, oh yeah, like that. We're going to be adding them on top of each other. So, OK, so let's do it. I mean, <laughs> uh, I want to go here here and we add them to the missive and okay so it looks brighter right they're just adding whatever uh, values already are here right okay that's fine but what if we also add a panner and i'm gonna uh, remember hold p and i'm gonna be copy pasting it when i plug them both here i want to create like some kind of effect uh some kind of a ripple effect and maybe you ask, OK, but uh, maybe we need a, a thinner texture. Maybe we need a texture with uh, with holes um, so it can be wavish. Uh, we don't have the texture necessary to do that, right? And uh, well, I used to think like that too when I started. And uh, well, it's not the case, right? We can modify the UVs and work with them to make them look better, or well, to make them look how we want them to look. So bring a texture coordinate, and we plug it in. And oh, of course, we need to give it some speed, right? So I just want to modify the Y for now. What about minus 0.3? It goes slowly downward. And if I... Well, we can already tell that one is moving and the other one isn't. Cool. But you can see that in some point, they both align perfectly. And that breaks the illusion of the material, right? Can you see it? There. Yeah. Uh, there we go. OK. So imagine that, OK, this is not 0.3. This is 0.4. Imagine that. Well, no, not imagine it. I just changed it. OK. That is 0.4. And what if we put here minus 0.2? That is still different, right? But 
they both are going to reach each other at some point. Eventually. Wait for it. There we go. So we need to put values that we know are not going to match um, anytime soon or never. So point three and point two, point two, three, that should be different enough. They should not match whatsoever. And just in case, we can also, because I, I, I'm not a math person, we can just do point five. So it moves a little bit slightly to the left. And here we can just say minus point zero four. And those are, yeah, now, well, if they ever meet, it's going to be after a long time, hopefully. But you kind of get what I mean. Hopefully you can do it better than me. So right now, okay, we see them panning across each other. It sort of kind of looks cool, I guess. But let's modify them a little bit with this texture coordinate. Remember that we did it before? So for this texture coordinate, I want to say that on the U, I want to put a 2. Now we can see in the preview that it's thinner. Okay, cool. I, I, I like that. And what about if we make it even better and uh, this is 0.4. Now it's definitely thinner. And it feels also longer. And it has a really cool effect, right? What if we put some color on it? So hold M, then hold 3. I just want to put color on one of them. And I want to make it blue, right? It's a kind of wave, right? I guess. Hmm. Maybe we should have chosen the other one that is bigger. But uh, yeah, I mean, it looks nice. Ah, let's also do the other. So three, keep it here. And just to just to see it better, I'm gonna put a different color. So what about this here? All right. So okay, we are we, we have just combined two textures, and we managed to modify this top one with uh, with uh, this texture coordinate. And okay, it looks good. But can we modify it even more? I mean, this looks fine, but maybe I want some holes. Maybe I want to make this texture very different from this one on the bottom. And there are many ways that we can do it with uh, mathematics, like uh, adding different nodes. But what if we just do it with color? And let me explain this better because I think that I didn't do it so well. So if I add one color like this, I can just, oh, and if, if you want to preview this, this single node, just right click and start previewing node. I suggest you place that on a hotkey. So um, if, for example, I want to give this texture different colors, how do you do that? I mean, you could do a... Uh, a lerp like we did earlier. It seems like you don't have that much control and it's not that artistic, right? It's just something like mathematics. Um, but I want to make this more interesting. So that's when we make curves. So we go, uh, I'm just going to create a new one. Name it curve. We enter. We want to right click. And under material, is it not? Uh, I can't remember. So just type curve. There we go. It's on miscellaneous. All right. We want to get a curve and also curve atlas. But first, start with the curve. And uh, we want a linear color and select it. And we can call, the, call this uh, and Just not name it like this. You can do however you want. And in here, well, it it, it doesn't have that many uh, 
tools that we need to use, but uh, here you can isolate uh, curves if you want. For now, we leave them all on. And this is the color curve, right? If you right click here, you can set exactly at what time you want it. Zero is when it starts, and here one is when it ends, right? So I'm thinking, and I'm gonna explain this to you looking at this texture. Okay, I'm gonna make it small, like that. Okay, so remember, well, this is just color, right? But this is the alpha. So remember that I told you that zero is completely black, right? You could say that this part is closer to zero than it is to one, right? Yeah, that's fairly simple. And you can say that this part here, it is closer to one than it is to zero, right? So with this curve, if we, for example, move this zero a little bit forward to time point one, this texture is going to start fading, right? Because we're saying that uh, whatever is uh, point one white, it's gonna be black. Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, you're gonna see it on the uh, on the example, right? And if you keep increasing it, it's gonna. If we put it here, it wait what? Oh, okay. If you put it here, then whatever is below 0.719 is going to be black. So most likely we're gonna be left with a little bit of white in some parts. Right, so that's the idea we want to do with with this color curve, right? We have a, instead of using LERPs and other mathematical nodes, we can use an artistic way to change the texture, okay? So I'm gonna right click this and probably put it at oh, 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 0.2. So maybe, oh, well, we need to test it anyway, right? And uh, I want to say, you know, for now, let's change, let's test it on black and white and see if it works. Maybe we need to keep making changes. So we have this color curve. How do we use it? Well, first, we need to store it on an atlas. So right click, type curve, that we now know that it's on miscellaneous, and we need a curve atlas. Curve Atlas, oh, I'm so bad at names. Um, colors, okay. And in here, if you double click it, we're going to be um, uh, storing our color curves. Here on Gradient, you can click plus. And, well, I have, well, there are plenty and I also made some, but we need to type CR color curve. And there, we stored it. Great, it's a good time to save. I haven't saved it all. Uh, I don't wanna save the map. Did I save everything? Okay, uh, I'm gonna save, replace it. Hopefully nothing breaks. Did it break? No, okay, cool. So now it is stored. Now we can use it. Let's go on our wave. I wanna clo close this cross. We don't need to use it anymore. And uh, I want to right click and type curve. And it's curve atlas row parameter. We can name it uh, top color. All right, when I place the curve, I crashed. <laughs> so, um, and the material didn't save. So I, I just quickly remade it. And I just didn't put any colors here because we we're going to be erasing them anyway. So we want to right click, type curve and curve atlas row parameter. And we can, well, I can't remember the name I put before, but uh, I'm gonna just gonna name it top curve. I think it, it looks nice, top gun, maybe, okay. I don't want this at all, I erase it. And how do you use a curve? If you look it here, it doesn't work. The curve and the atlas are not currently set. Oh, of course, I, I we haven't set them, so. On Atlas, we click here. We need to pick our curve Atlas that we made and the curve, the one that we made too. So what 
happens? Is anything happening? Nope, nothing happens. Because we are multiplying these two. We do not need to multiply them. We need the curve to affect this material directly. Well, this this texture. So I want to erase this. Place it here. I want to pick a channel. Red is fine. Because in this texture, it doesn't ha is, it does not have plenty of channels like uh, the cross. You can see this is the same one, right? All across. So I just want to pick uh, a black and white one. Oh no, we lost the map too. Oh, oh well. So I want to put it here. And now this result, place it here. How is that looking? Now you can see, well, it has holes. Remember the explanation? of uh, zero, one, and then and, and bright and dark, yeah. So it did work. That way we can also modify our texture without going to Substance Designer or Photoshop or asking your um, your friend or your artist to make more, more things, right? Although if you're using this, you're probably an artist, but uh, I don't know what I'm talking about, it seems. So now we can modify this color curve a little bit better and give it a more pleasant Colors, I would say. So I want to click here, left, uh, one left click. It creates a new, a new um, key. Right click. I want to put this on point four, a little bit there, and I want to double click it and change the color. So what about a cute light blue? I do not want to make it emissive. So for now, this is fine. And what if it changes color fast? And it goes to uh, maybe this green. Maybe that's fine. And uh, though this probably can be at 0.7, you can see the curves here uh, being modified. And when you're working with colors, and well, with animation um, uh, in general, you do not want to have these straight lines, unless it's on purpose. You usually want to have curves. So you can just, um, you can just, uh, how do you say this? Uh, mar mark them? Well, select them, right click, and go on Auto. That makes it automatically curve. And we need to do that for every one of them, right? So just here, Auto, this two here, Auto, and at last, this one out. I don't think that I can, I can get these ones too. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, so everything is a curve. We probably don't want this one, but uh, we're going to see what happens. You can always just click it and dip, 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 change it, right? We save and we go to our wave. And sure, now we can see that it has some nice tones. All right. I don't see any of the color that we created though. Most likely because we are just modifying it too late. Although, although maybe, yeah, probably it's it's on the brighter parts. We can just try and whip, put it like this. Yeah, it is on the brighter parts. It looks fine. I just probably want to make it back to 0.7 though. And uh, do we want to make another curve? Probably not, huh? Okay. So we have a curve for this one and it's looking nice. And I also want to make another one for this. So we raise it and I'm gonna save. I don't want to crash again. Right click, curve, Atlas row parameter. And this is uh, bottom curve. I don't know why bottom, but it's bottom curve. It has no sense. And we add them together. Oh, of course, it, it, all right, it has no atlas. There we go. And this is not looking good. I do not enjoy that at all. I think that we need to do some, some modifications. It's kind of odd that it's looking like this, though. It shouldn't be looking like that. It should not. Uh, maybe it's, yeah, probably it's just too bright. So this here, 
probably we move it a little bit. This red is being a little bit annoying. Like that, probably. Can be a little bit better. Nope. Probably we can do it like that. I mean, it's about uh, just testing and checking what works the best. But if we just do something way softer. Nope. We just erase it, maybe. Well, that's looking a little bit better. But I think that you can kind of get where I'm going at, right? With these color curves, you can, well, on a sphere, it's going to look way prettier, for sure. OK, nice. So these curves gives you a lot of uh, a lot of power, right? When you want to modify your textures, and that that can also work uh, to modify different things, uh, mathematical things on uh, other nodes, right? Okay, I still don't like how this looks, but we should move on. I mean, we've learned from this one. I don't want to spend more time trying to correct it, but you can do it if you want to. Probably just a different curve for this uh, for this one. Probably not so much black, right? It's up to you. It's up to you. Okay. Can we place again our our done thingies? Shapes, plane. This one. A little bit bigger, please. There we go. And I want probably sphere for the other one. You don't need to do this, remember? I, I, I just get happy when I see them here. So this one is going to have the cross instance. And this one is going to have the wave. And OK, they're, they're looking fine. I still don't like this one. But no, no, no. I need to learn when to stop. OK. All right, I'm sorry. I went in and modified it. <laughs> and uh, now I like it. I like these small highlights. And well, it's not the big thing anyways. But uh, I just couldn't live with it. I'm sorry. I know that my partners are sometimes angry at me because I spend too much time being perfectionist. But uh, I, I mean, it, it looks fine. All right, anyway. Anyways, uh, we should move to the next set of instructions and the next material. So I want to, huh? I want to close these ones. It was fun. I really like the curves. And now new material m underscore. I'm gonna say banish. Okay. So. For our next material, uh, it's going to be different this time. My intention with this material is to create some kind of a mask that can dissolve, right? For this example in particular, I'm going to be using a, a masked blend mode and also unlit. All right. So. Let's bring in our, and I don't know why I brought so many textures. I'm just using a few, few of them. I think it's fine anyway. OK. So I want this texture to start fading away um, from uh, white to black, right? Which means that I want the whiter parts or, or I'm sorry, the um, the parts that are closest to dark to start fading away, right? In in order from zero from one to zero. So how do we do that? There is a node, and if you didn't understand me again, I'm gonna <laughs> explain it better uh, graphically. Okay, so use type subtract, and if we plug it here and we plug it on the missive. We can see that, well, nothing happens. And that happens because our value here is, here is 1. If we place 0, it's the full texture. Everything is cool. But if you put 0.1 or 0.2, it starts dissolving in the way that I tried to tell you when I explained it. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And uh, so there are ways to preview uh, a value here. Imagine that, that you want to preview uh, from one to zero, from one to zero. Just type sign, oh, sorry, debug sign, debug time, debug time sign. And you plug it in, and it's just going to do the work for you. This is not going to show uh, in-game, right? But it's just to debug it. Or does it show in-game? I, I don't think so. Okay. This helps debug. But you get the idea, right? So this subtract is subtracting this texture to this value. Right? And uh, cool. We can just subtract in uh, various really cool uh, disintegration effects. And we're going to make a, a really, really simple one right now. Because if uh, if this is all uh, at this material, that will be really boring, right? Okay. So let's start. We have this subtract. Cool. I don't want this time sign for now. So just hold Alt and left click to um, cut it. And I want another subtract. My idea here is that I want to subtract this texture twice and then combine it. Or, well, then combine it and subtract it. But the texture on the bottom is going to be modified a little bit so it is bigger and has different edges than the top one. And that's going to create a, a really cool um, outline. It's going to be really simple. And you may be asking again, wasn't this a beginner's material course? And I keep I keep repeating this because it, it crosses my mind. But isn't this a little bit too advanced? But I don't think this is too advanced, right? We're going really slow and you're learning what nodes do. And uh, isn't it fun? Okay, enough convincing myself. Let's continue. So we, uh, well, we just want to take one channel. I'm going to be taking red. And here I take red as well. Okay, so for this one, I want to put an add and I want to put two values so uh, they contrast each other if it makes sense what I'm saying. So the first value is going to be this debug time sign. I'm going to plug it on both of these. I plug it here too. I want to preview this. So, so far, nothing's happening, right? Because this add is a, is a one. But if we go on zero, okay, the same thing happens. If we go a little bit higher, maybe 4, 0 0.04, okay, now there is a difference between them. Obviously, one is darker and one is a clearer, but that also means that the times when they vanish are different. And that's going to... Right, and if we want to make this a little bit more, um, a, a little stronger, we can just do a multiply and a value here, which is gonna increment um, the thick lines in this subtract. So what about ten? Yeah, now it is way stronger. See, it's just being multiplied by a number. That's cool. Okay. What if we subtract each other now? How does that look? Can we plug this on the opacity mask and not on the emissive? All right, I can say that we cannot see anything so far. It is the same thing, right? And I should have been showing you this example on the opacity mask, not emissive, my bad. It's an opacity mask. Because this is going to be an opacity mask, after all. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so what can we do to uh, to make these edges show a little bit more? And that's easy. We want to hold three. Or you can make a curve and make it cooler. But it's up to you. It's not going to be <laughs> in here. So I'm just going to put some green maybe and I want to multiply it 
So by what do we multiply it? We want to multiply it by this whole equation. So it's this one. And what's the result? Eh, not that cool of a result, I see. So we put it on the music. All right, now we see some little uh, black marks. So our opacity mask is wrong because in here we want this, uh, this whole configuration to be our outline. And our opacity mask, maybe it could be this one. It does not look good enough. Hmm. So probably I don't want uh, so many values uh, in this texture. As you can see, it is uh, 1.1 1 .1 and, 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 and whatever, right? Maybe I want to make them, um, I don't want that much of a gradient. For that, there is a node called seal. And if we expand it, you can see that the values are uh, are uh, int, right? They are uh, whole. What if we put it on opacity mask? Okay, that is looking a little bit better, but not quite what we need. What if we also put a seal on this subtract? So we just stop having these gradients. Maybe that's gonna help us get more color. We plug it in. And, oh, do you know why it's not showing? I'm going to just plug this here normally. Because we're still previewing this one. I don't know if you noticed before me. Hopefully you did. Okay, obviously we couldn't see anything. So now you can kind of see what is going on here. Right? We're using this subtract against each other. And it's subtracting in a really nice way. So this is another material that I wanted to show you. We probably do need this seal here, but ah, it's it's okay. I wonder though, does it work with this without this one? Oh no, we really need this seal. Okay. So I hope that you found this one cool. And uh, this debug time sign, we can erase it. We can hold one to bring a, a constant. Or if you want a parameter to modify it on the on the material instance, you can hold S and left click. And that brings you a constant parameter. And we can say this is animation. Okay. And oh, how did I do that? Uh, Control C. I hold Shift and left click. I just dragged it here. Okay. So now if we click on apply. Content browser, or materials, or vanish, right click, material instance, and we double click. We enable animation and we start playing with it. You can see how it works. Okay, and you can use it on the blueprints on or on Niagara, however you want. Right? It's a really simple disintegration effect. Really, really simple. And if you make it if you want to make it even more simple, you can just use you subtract as I showed you earlier, right? And that's uh, way more simple. Okay, so let's put our next. Uh, I want to hold Alt and uh, left click drag to create a copy. And I want to put my instance here. Yeah, that, that looks cool. Well, that looks pixelated, but it's fine. All right. And our next material is going to be really simple but it's going to be a key material for the next one that we're going to make. Okay, so I can erase Vanish already. And, uh, and right click. You want to say M underscore Fresnel. And we enter. Okay, this is again going to be really simple. What I want with this is just an additive and additive and only. Okay. So I'm just gonna make it and then uh, explain it to you kind of what is happening. All right. 
I want uh No, probably not. Just hold three and pick a color. That's good. And now we want to right click and type present. This effect is going to be useful mostly for meshes. Uh, well, not all the time as, as, as everything, but you're going to be using it for some meshes. We want to hook this on the opacity. And you can already see what is happening around here. So this is creating a, how do you say, a halo, well, a, a Fresnel, <laughs> around our, our preview mesh. If you preview it on a plane, it's going to be way different. You can kind of see how reflections change on the, uh, depending where you look at it, sure. But it's going to be more noticeable on, uh, on spheres and other meshes. OK. So um, this Fresnel can be modified by this exponent and by this reflection. Sure, you can tweak it out. You can have fun with it. Oh. And that is up to you to test exactly what everything does. OK? But uh, imagine that, I don't know, you have a shield and you have this cool Fresnel effect, right? What you can do besides, uh, well, hold on. We hold S and we type exponent. So we can modify it on the instance, right? And we hold S again. I'm just going to type ref and we place it here. We cannot see anything because uh, now, now the value is zero here, but just put a default that is the same as you can see here on the left side. And we apply it. Oh, oh it's 5, not 0.4. OK, nice. So besides just putting a color, you can also kind of play around with the texture. Let's use a new texture, because uh, I'm kind of tired of that one, right? What about these tendrils? Let's multiply it. Although now that you've learned about curves, you can probably make something very interesting with uh, with this texture and the curves. And we apply it. And now you can see how this, this halo, this Fresnel, has also this texture, right, around. You can modify it with your, um, what was the name? Oh, Lord, I forgot. Let me check. It's here. Ah, oh, there you go. You can modify it with the texture coordinate. You can also make it pan. You can get really creative, right? But this is really useful for uh, for meshes, mostly, as I told you. Let's just place another sphere here. Place the Fresnel on it. And I want to show you something. So what happens if on this Fresnel you just go through, well, you, you cannot see much, right? So what can we do to intensify the color, remember? Just multiply it. And just, uh, let's just give it a 10. Now it looks very PlayStation 2, but uh, this is just an example, so it's fine. If our sphere with a Fresnel, or actually any material, intersects geometry, you're going to see this really harsh line, and it's going to remember you, or well, it's going to remind you of the PS1 era, the good old times. So actually, any of them, if you intersect them, it's going to look ugly. OK, so what can you do about that? Because it really does not look good. That's pretty easy. Here on the opacity, which is the one in charge of the silhouette, right? You can type depth fade. And we can multiply these two. And we plug it on opacity. So this depth fade is calculating uh, when this material should start to fade whenever it crosses something, right? So if you go here, you can see there is no more harsh intersection. And you can even make it a, uh, and you can even make it more, um, more uh, uh, bigger. Right? You can make it bigger. OK, cool. So that's a 
Anita node. That's really helpful. But what about, um, what if you want the inverse? What if you want, as soon as you intersect something to light up or something like that? We're not gonna make the whole thing, but you can always type one minus. And this node is gonna do exactly the opposite of what is of what everything is doing, right? If you put it here, it's gonna do the, the opposite of this whole thing, right? Now this only shows if you intersect something. So that's another neat thing to know, right? I well, this one minus does not work on everything uh, straightforward. But uh, what if, does it? it? Should. Does it give it like an anti-Fresnel thing? And we multiply it by one? Well, it, it, it kinda, it kinda does. But you get the idea, right? So now we have, well, now we've checked this Fresnel. Now we should go to our last material. That is, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun material. And it's gonna teach you how to change the shape of your, of whatever mesh you're using. It's gonna be cool. Actually, I think I lied because I think that we have a, a little bit more to learn apart from our last material. So let's make yet another material. A new one. So right click. We're gonna name this one Lightning. I've done this one on, on other videos, um, but we're gonna try to make it slow so we can kind of understand what is going on. All right. Additive and also unlit is the deal here. So remember how we talked about, uh, for example, how this one, well, no, 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 not this one, how this one can just go on opacity and uh, it's gonna be um, the shape that our material has, right? But putting a texture on our material, it is, it is heavy, right? O obviously it's not a big deal, right? It's just a texture. But if you want to save up space, there are always ways that you can uh, make masks with, uh, with mathematics, right? I'm just going to give you one example. And there are many ways to do many of them, right? So just want to erase this. I want to drag a texture coordinate. Remember that this allows us to modify the UVs of whatever texture we have or, or whatever mathematic we have. So if we open this up, you can see how it is composed, right? It, 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 it is composed on all of the channels, on all, uh, going on the directions. Well, two of them, right? So I want to mask and only get one channel, a channel that probably is going uh, with a gradient downward. So I want to go uh, and type component. I want to select and I wanna select component mask, okay? I wanna copy this. So this allows us to isolate channels. It can be in our textures or it can be in our mathematics too, right? So I wanna hook this texture coordinate to the mask and I wanna preview it. And it looks exactly the same. And that is because here on the left side, we haven't uh, unchecked anything. If we uncheck this, we get this gradient. Okay, cool. But I want the green one. It's going downwards. That's nice. And I wanna put this here too. And I also want the green here. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to make like a, a linear gradient uh, on the middle that is, is stronger on the middle and then it fades out uh, on the top and bottom. I can just get a texture like that or I can also do it with mathematics, right? So the next node that I wanna teach you is named power. We hold, uh, no, no, we don't hold anything. We just type power. Yeah, I was gonna say hold P, but P is spanner. 
and we bring in the power node. This is gonna help us um, make white more white, if you can call it like that. Although here it says returns the base value raised to the power of the exponent. Okay, that's more accurate. All right. And you're gonna see exactly how this works. Right now, you can see how it's starting to fade. If you start to increase it, it, it gets tighter and tighter, which is nice. I wanna put a tree, maybe this is fine. And I wanna put a power here too. This can help a lot too on colors. So maybe putting a power on our, on our cross could have been cool. You can test it out, right? And uh, well, let's multiply them both. Because if we add them, remember, we're not gonna, we're gonna see a, oh wait. So we did something wrong here. I wanted to make a, a combination here in the middle and uh, it wasn't the case. I want to invert this. Remember how you invert things? With one minus. You place it here, it's inverted. And now you can see this cylinder in here. We can just say, okay, another multiplication. We can say, okay, 20, really strong. But what if to this we put a power? Uh, not a banner, power. So we put a power here and again, it makes it tighter, right? So a four. So that's just an example right, of what we can do with mathematics. There are many things that you can, uh, well, many masks that you can also create. For example, imagine, and this is pre-made, this, this, this is cool. Imagine that you wanna make a radial gradient. You just type radial gradient. <laughs> and there you have it. Well, this one, since it's a material function, you cannot preview it. And what is a material function? I, I never explained it. And I need some water, hold on. So a material function, oh, that's so refreshing. Uh, it's a, an, an already pre-made uh, part of a material that it's uh, compressed and you can use it in other places, right? Really handy so your, your material doesn't look so huge and, uh, and clamped. Is, is clamped the word? I don't know. But yeah. So if you wanna preview it, just maybe M or maybe we can just start with node, but... And there you go, it's a radial gradient. And you can modify things here with holding one. And you can plug them here and you can modify things. Right? Pretty cool. Pretty cool things. I'm gonna just leave this one here, just laying around all really cool. And let's make some lightning. So I wanna bring in this lightning. And I want to bring this one too. So these two textures are different. This lightning is a, a really quick lightning. <laughs> it's just lines, whatever. And the one on the top, it's, uh, it's the same lightning, but it's very blurred, right? And it's going to help us make some really cool, uh, cool effect. So, uh, as I told you, I've made this, this effect before on a previous tutorial of material overlays. Maybe you want to check that out and learn some stuff. That could be cool too. I'm not going to make it as complex as that one. I'm not going to make so many notes or, or so many things. I just want to make something really simple that can uh, show you how, how word position works. Okay. Ah, so much talking. So let's bring in our good old confident noise with T. Okay. And I want to uh, distort these two textures. Remember how we distorted on the first material? Probably too early. Hold M, red channel, here point one. And we want to add it to a texture coordinate. 
like that. Cool. Now uh, we should be able to distort it, right? But nothing happens. Or, or well, apparently nothing happens, right? We preview it. Well, apparently nothing happens. No, no, yeah, it, it, it is happening here on the on the back, I think. But uh, remember, it's because we have no um, no banner node going around. And I'm gonna hold P this time for real, and it, we really need a banner. And uh, I'm gonna plug it here and here. And let's give it like a 0.1 and 0.3, nothing too fancy. And if you preview it, preview node, you can see how Oh, and this is an this is not an artifact. Don't worry, it's it's not gonna show. Yeah, it's like a ghosting. I probably need to restart my computer. Anyways, uh, it doesn't matter. So, if you notice, we are distorting them both with the same configuration. That is because we are gonna be multiplying them both too against each other. Let's see how that looks and if we haven't made a mistake. Okay, preview now. Although this ghosting is bothering me a lot, I should restart. Does it show on the on the level? Because if it doesn't show, then it's fine. I wanna I want a plane. Clone this here. I wanna put my lightning here. I don't see. Oh. Obviously, I won't see anything because it's not plugged in. Emissive color, apply. Yeah, it's not replicating here, so I don't mind. But you can see the distortion, right? Cool. Uh, although, you know, I think that uh, they both being combined is erasing a lot of detail. But maybe, you know, maybe that's what we want. Yeah, I I said that I don't want to make it so complicated as the other one that I made, but uh, I keep trying to make it more complex. Okay, for now, this is fine. If it doesn't work as intended, then uh, then I'm gonna I'm gonna be uh, modifying it, right? Okay, so we already have these. Uh, oh, and. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't want a plane because if it's a plane, you won't be able to see anything. I want a sphere. And I wanna put the lightning on this sphere. Okay, so you can see it going around. Okay, cool. Maybe we can add some color to it. Maybe you want to add a curve. Mm -hmm. That's up to you. I promise I won't overdo it. And I want this to be emissive. I want it to shine, maybe a tree. And we plug it in. And yeah, nice. It's looking like um, game lightning. Sorta, of, sorta of it is. Okay. Now, what if we add Fresnel to this effect to kind of make it uh, look a little bit better? Let's try it, right? So we do the same thing. We type Fresnel. We don't want to modify this I think yeah um okay so this is gonna be good to to show you imagine that okay you want to give the Fresnel a color right okay we can give it uh like blue to match the lightning right that could that should be nice and we plug it on the opacity as we talked uh on the last exercise okay cool uh Nothing is showing. We are trying to put color on opacity and opacity does not register color, right? So we shouldn't be doing that. We should be doing this on the emissive. And well, let's do it. So let's put it here. And well, this is the thing. We do not need to multiply these two. We do not need a combined effect, right? We have one effect that is this lightning, and we have another effect, which is the Fresnel. 
they do not need to be uh, like merged together. We can add them both. So we add them together because they are both uh, good on their own, right? And if you go on this pier, it is looking a little bit better. Although these really big lines I do not like, but I'll have to let it go for now. No, for now, no, I, no, I really need to let it go. I'm, I'm not going to go in depth. Okay. We click on apply and let's check it out. It's looking nice. Okay, the Fresnel is fine. I don't think we need to adjust the values on it. But what if we want to like emulate this electricity like popping through the sphere? Like maybe lightning is really there. Right, we are trying to modify uh, the. Um, oh, I got this, I got distracted for a second. We are trying to modify the world position offset of this sphere. So let's just type it. We need a vertex normal. This is gonna help us extract the data from our uh, from our mesh. And if we expand it with Control and Alt, we can see a little bit more information. Nice. It, can, it is useful for making a mesh grow or shrink. Yeah, obviously we're gonna be using that. So we wanna multiply this. With what though? What do we want to multiply it with? The Fresnel? The Fresnel is not gonna help us anything. We need to multiply it with the texture, right? We want it to pop out. We probably don't want the combination. We probably just want to get the blur one. Let's test it and we cannot preview that much here. We just need to plug it on world position offset. And click on apply and see if it's working. Maybe it's not. Okay, I don't see this working at all. So we need to, I'm gonna close this. We need to modify and see what's going on. Maybe we need more potency. That could be it. How do we make something pop more? We multiply it. Here, let's just make it a 10. And it's gonna break probably. Oh, it's not breaking. But you can already see how it is modifying the texture and suddenly your material is more believable. Right? We could probably make it have more uh, more waves and it's going to look more interesting. Or if you check the, the other video on material overlays, you can see how cool it looks on a hero. It looks really amazing. Really, really amazing. Okay. So this is this was a fun example and I had to try hard not to make it look way better. I mean, this, this core here looks fine. Okay, okay. It looks fine. I'm going to show you one more material and it's going to be an exercise uh, on mostly what we have learned so far. So I want to save this, please. I want to save this. All right. And let's make a here in selection mode. Let's go on modeling. This is going to be fairly simple. We want uh, this arrow here. Just left click, pop, placed. Now let's modify something. So the shaft radius. Oh, these values are so crazy. Uh, 10. Okay, 10. Shaft height. Probably like that. It does not need to be the same. Don't worry if you don't get it the same. 20. Okay. Mm, shaft height needs to be lower, I think. 30. Yeah. So let's imagine that this is our sword. <laughs> And I said that with a really weird accent. Maybe 10, no, 15, kind of bothering me. Okay, this this looks nice. Just click on accept and go back to selection here. All right, it, it does this look like a sword? Let's pretend it looks like a sword, okay? Okay, let, let, let's just pretend this looks like a sword. Okay, I want to make a, a cool glow for it. Not an over well uh, made glow as we've done with this one. I, I, I mean, as we tried not to do with uh, with this sphere, 
but just a, a cool looking glow. And we're gonna be using distortion and and whatever else. Let's create a new material. So right click material m underscore sword aura and we enter. And this material I want it additive and unlit. And probably two sided. Ah no, it's fine. I want to close lightning. All right. So in these textures that we have, and we're finally going to be using some, I have a sword mask here. Okay. The kind of the shape of this, right? Kind of. I want to plug it in on opacity and uh, just hold one, put one. I want to preview it, kind of preview it and see how it is going. Let's select a plane and uh, just pretend it's like a, it's going to be our sword glow. So probably like this, we'll probably elongate it a little bit, probably like that, maybe, maybe. And let's place this on our plane. Ah. Oh. Is it uh, on the wrong direction? It's always in the wrong direction, isn't it? Control C, replace it. Yeah, we need to rotate it like that. I should have done that before, huh? And we want to elongate it now. Is that good enough? That's probably good enough. That that's that's probably good enough. Okay. So this sort aura, we can already see some issues. Like for example, if we zoom in. We can see how it's being cut so abruptly here on the bottom. We may need to address that later on if we see that it's uh, that it's been um, that it's been uh, cropped like this. Maybe we can move the UVs upwards. Maybe we can just use a mask here on the bottom and combine them both so it doesn't look or subtract it. Right? We can do plenty of things. But uh, as we start making the effect, we're going to see if we really need them or not. First of all, I want to uh, distort this, this, uh, this mask. Although something tells me that I should have used, or well, we should have used this way more cooler texture. But, well, if you want to use that one, it's up to you. Just remember to use the... Um, black and white. Okay, so let's distort this texture. What if we add some lightning on it? And we can put the blurred or just the normal lightning. So hold T and we bring it in. I want to press P, not for power, but for panner. And I want to pan it on 0.4, seems to be the magic number. Okay, and if you remember our method of uh, distorting, we can hold M to here, put it on point 0.1, we can add, and we can get a texture coordinate, we plug it in, and we plug it on the UVs to distort them. And what is happening here? So sure, we can see that it's been distorted on the background, which looks nice, but we can also see how now our texture is even uh, way lower. We may need to correct that. We may need to search for a different way to, uh, to distort this texture if we see that at the end it continues looking like this, because there are many ways to distort the texture, right? But for now, Let's say that this is good enough and that we don't want to overdo it. Okay, let's bring in again our noise. I like this texture because it, it, it has so many cool waves. Okay, we should get a panner and probably a panner with the same speed will be okay. Now, I want to multiply them both. I uh, just want to pick the red just in case, red, and here also just the red. Now, how does that look? So 
we preview it. That's already looking really interesting, right? If we place it here, stop previewing it, apply it, and check it. Okay, it has more more texture to it, right? It it looks way better. I'm gonna make it a little bit more. Maybe we don't need that, but that's fine. It already has a little bit more uh more differ more uh, differentiation on you get me right okay thank you so i want to make this one a little bit more intense maybe hold m and we go on b and let's make it a five so it is way brighter nice and if we if we put a power to it we make those blacks blacker so five yeah a little bit that looks cool and this power could also have worked uh, with our wave example before remember to make the blacks be more black and uh, and so on that can work too what about if we put 15. yeah although again it's not the same effect. I mean, it's not the same result, but you can see how it can work. Okay, we raise it because we don't want this. And what if we what if we want to put a curve to this part as well? Let's try it, right? So we multiply it, this and this, because we also want these uh, these, these different. Uh, this different um, variation. And now you can see the combination of both is even more interesting. It even has more brights than this one. That looks cool, right? Cool. Now let's add a curve, but we also need to create a, well, I would like to create a different color curve for this one. Maybe something more interesting could be the way to go. So curve. And uh, we go for here, curve, linear color, uh, color curve zero two, because I'm apparently not creative enough. Okay, and for this one, I'm thinking, what if we make something different, uh, something a little bit more interesting? What if we made the insides softer and the outside brighter? That should be cool. So let's make it start with a, like a tree, maybe emissive, like this. And what if we leave it like that? Let's see. So curve, curve atlas, color curve zero three. Well, uh, I don't know. And uh, well, now we have a problem, right? We shouldn't be using this one anymore. And no opacity, we just use directly to emissive. And we run where we run into a, we into a problem now. And we need to figure out why. Most likely we cannot uh, we cannot hook this directly. We are using red, red. Do we let me see. This should be fine. So subtract. I'm gonna place it here and uh, hold one. No, it's not. Lit oh, okay. I, I, I was really trying to think why is it not working? Because we haven't configured it here. It happens more often than you think. Oh, and, and well, we cannot use the curve that we just made because we haven't added it to the Atlas. It's good that this happens, so you can see it too. And we named it 02, and it's this one. We save, and we can put here 02. Okay, that's better. So now the blacks are completely violet, and that's, well, not good at all. So we need to change that. What if at zero, this is obviously black, but 
at point one, this is as we did before three here. Can we try that? Did it work? Yeah. Okay, kinda cool. I I, I kinda 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 like it. But this white part is not present. We need to make it. So this what? Do we do we make it around here? We wanna put it like dark. Well, not exactly what I was thinking, but this also looks kind of cool. Kind of cool. Maybe lower it a little bit. Or maybe up it a little bit and expand it. Now, there is one issue that I see. And it is that this thing is it's not, um, it's not even. I don't like it. And the reason it is not even, it's because of the kind of distortion that we've made. Right? Uh, it seems that we don't have problems in the bottom anymore, but this texture is not centered anymore. At least that's what I feel. So we need to make a different uh, distortion method. This, I think it's fine when your texture is full, but when you have a mask, it may not be the best idea. So we're gonna make a really simple and uh, and cool trick. And again, you don't need to memorize all of these things. You can just save it on a material and reuse it later, right? Because it's always gonna be the same uh, the same uh, uh, methods to do or distortion or, or or whatever, right? You can just save it on a Material instant. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. On a material function, or you can just copy paste, right? So we wanna again drag one channel, and we want to subtract it. We want to subtract it by 0.5. That makes it so only uh, the places on 0.5 and higher can be seen, right? It makes them thinner. And now we may, I wanna make it softer. So when I multiply it and multiply it by 0.1, probably. Okay. This is the same uh, method that we used with this one, right? We just wanna make the distortion soft, not so strong, just, yeah, just barely soft. Now we want to add it by one. And what this makes is that we can barely see the texture and there is also white. Now we're gonna uh, do different things to be able to uh, undo this one and add more things. Does that explain anything? Okay, we were gonna continue as we go. <laughs> so we wanna multiply this here, and we also want to subtract it again. And we cannot see anything because we need our Texture coordinate, otherwise we are subtracting nothing. Right? Okay. So you can clearly tell that we've just moved this texture. Well, first with the I split it in four, right? And in here, if we stop reviewing it. Oh, oh wait, wait. I skipped that vital part. I, I've talked too much, I think, and I'm a little bit slow now. So now, at last, we need to add this. And this should be a perfect distortion with zero. Yeah, I can barely see it here. With zero uh, skews on our model. So let's test it. Oh, it's a complete skew. Oh, we don't need a one. It's, it's a 0.5 here. Uh -huh, we're just selecting this, this part here. And that's a perfect distortion on our model. We can see now these little things here. That's really cool. We can apply it and this looks better. I mean, we could also do a Fresnel here on the sword, but that will be up to you. I mean, I just wanted to show you this different kind of distortion, maybe this multiplication with different things. 
And again, you could be adding way more things, maybe a better color curve than me. Actually, I'm kind of upset uh, uh, with this color curve. The old one that I made with more patience was, was way more fun. Let's, let's add it, you know? Just to check it out. So I had a lot of fun with this one. I didn't even name it. And uh, okay, this is fine. And new color curve. So is it ever gonna load? Hmm. Makes me think something wrong happened. Oh yeah, and you can see the curve here up top. It does not take that much space, which is awesome. And well, the curve does not work and I do not know why and it's okay. It's probably just a, a thing of restarting and redoing it. But well, that's the end of the tutorial. I hope that you learned a lot. I know that uh, many of these could be looking way better. I want to control C. Yeah. Uh, but the point was not to make it incredibly good looking, but to get you the basics of what you can do with materials if you're a beginner on BFX or, you know, a beginner in materials in general, right? You learn distortion, you learn how multiplication and texture coordinates and color curves can save your butt. Disintegration, uh, Fresnel, uh, world position offset, and uh, this weird thing. <laughs> so I hope that you had fun, that it was a good base for you. Please let me know if you found it useful because I, I haven't done this for, um, for some time and uh, maybe I should be doing it more. I don't know. Uh, I mean, these really basic tutorials. Maybe I can do one with Niagara too. And that could also be lots of fun. So please let me know. And I hope that you had a great time and I'll be seeing you.